Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So just last week, it was announced that sadly, Frank Ocean dropped out of weekend two of Coachella. And I think he's been slated to headline the festival since like 2019 or 2020. So a lot of people have been expecting to see him for years. So it is kind of sad that things turn out the way that they did. I think even with some of the negative reviews from his weekend one performance, people still didn't expect him to drop out of the festival entirely for the following weekend. So of course in the video I do want to get into sort of what happened and also talk a little bit about both sides of being, you know, kind of upset about this, try to, you know, shed light on both sides of the argument. Here. As most of you know, Coachella is one of the biggest, if not the biggest musical festival in America. The festival, which started in 1999, began as a smaller, more intimate event, a lost weekend, if you will, where fans could spend a weekend in the desert with their favorite bands. In recent years, the event has become more commercial, and aside from music, Coachella is now also a networking event and place to be seen. This has become especially so with the rise of influencer culture, with some saying the event is like the Influencer Olympics. However, this exposure works for the artists too. Smaller artists benefit from fans being at the festival all day and checking out other acts instead of leaving the grounds. The event can also be wonderful exposure for foreign artists. And in cases where these artists already have a big American fan base, it can make sense to perform at Coachella because there's a higher likelihood their fans are concentrated in one area. Even for seasoned performers like Beyonce, the festival is the place to show your best in front of the entire world. It can also be a way to put on a show outside of the typical setup of their tours where they can create a unique explosive experience for fans over the two weekends. Headlining Coachella is a massive honor and the performance is reserved for the final slot of each night. Each year, three headliners are chosen to perform on the same day of both weekends of the festival. The headlining shows typically are the largest and most anticipated performance of each night. And the headliners, of course, do receive top billing for the event. So whatever happened at Frank's performance would have been bad regardless, but it was even worse considering he was the headliner. Seems like the first alarm bell rang when it was announced just hours before Frank's Sunday night performance that it wouldn't be live streamed. Typically performances, especially the headlining performances, are live streamed on YouTube for fans to watch. Artists can opt out of this for several reasons, but it typically is negotiated in advance. Fans worldwide were especially excited to watch Frank headline since it was his first live performance since 2017. YouTube hastily announced his performance wouldn't be live streamed via Twitter, but did not give an explanation as to why. I want to insert a TikTok of Jordan T. Alexander talking about how the lack of live streaming was a misstep. And all of this is alleged and speculation, of course. First thing I thought about, because everyone's been talking about their strict act, TikTok, all this stuff, is the fact that YouTube should have had exclusive rights to stream Frank Ocean's set, but he said no to them, and then it still inevitably was able to be streamed by their competitor. TikTok. And not only that, Meta was technically able to stream Frank's set too, but YouTube, who should have again had exclusive rights, wasn't able to. As the TikTok points out, Frank's performance was live streamed anyway, coincidentally through TikTok, which was to be expected. TikToker Morgan Doesn't Care captured one of the best recordings of the performance, streaming to over 130,000 people. She, like others, flew to the festival specifically to see Frank. She said people bullied her in the live stream for sending updates regarding the delayed performance and for mentioning that she was an aspiring artist. Frank started his set over an hour late. When he finally came on, he seemed detached from and disinterested in the performance. At some points, Frank didn't even have his mic in his hand. He and his band performed several covers and there was a DJ there that was seemingly random. The arrangements of several songs were changed, which was disappointing considering he hadn't performed the original versions in years and some of the songs that would have been his first time performing them live. In addition, the people walking around on stage seemed oddly placed as if they were confused. Parts of the stage were obstructed by large video screens and some fans complained about not being able to see or hear the performance unless they were directly in the front. Overall, the performance was confusing, lackluster, and seemed unrehearsed. Several upset posts and comments said it seemed like Frank wasn't taking it seriously. Others said it was more of a listening party or a karaoke than a concert. Wait, no, one hour. It's over. One hour. LA. I'm sober too. My heart hurts. And not in a good way. <laughs> Though he arrived late, Frank ended the show early as he had run past the midnight curfew established by the city. On Fridays and Saturdays, the curfew is 1 a.m. Coachella's promoter Golden Voice is fined whenever the performances run past curfew. The initial five minutes results in a $20,000 fine, and every minute after that is an additional $1,000. The festival ran over all three nights on Weekend 1. 
Bad Bunny went 25 minutes over on Friday, Calvin Harris went 22 minutes over on Saturday, and Frank Ocean went 25 minutes over on Sunday. This resulted in Golden Voice being fined $117,000 for the weekend. Because he ended his set early, Frank never performed Thinking About You, which is his most popular song. Frank ended the set by saying, Guys, I'm being told it's curfew, so that's the end of the show. Thank you so much. It came out the following day on Monday that originally there were supposed to be ice skaters skating around Frank and his band. These were the people who were walking around him on the stage. However, just hours before the performance, Frank called this off. There are different reasons that people claim this happened. According to the Fest of Al, the ice rink for the stage setup had already been constructed and Frank changed his mind last minute. Because of this, the skaters who had practiced for weeks just walked around him. The stage had to be melted and deconstructed and then reset how Frank wanted it, which was what caused the hour delay. The Fest of Al also pointed out that aside from the fans, the people who really lost here are the skaters who practiced and the people who worked hard on the stage and everyone else who was helping Frank work on his performance. These are people's livelihoods and their work on these big productions can help them secure other jobs. Someone who worked on the stage said they and others were upset that their hours of hard work would go unnoticed because of a last minute decision. Later in the day, a statement came from Frank's camp saying the stage was changed last minute to account for an injury Frank got during rehearsals and Frank was insistent on still performing. He was sitting during the performance but made the choice to get up during other parts, which seems like an odd choice for an injured person. Because it's not like Frank's music really necessitates him moving around a lot of the stage. You can be chill and still be trying and have a captivating stage presence. And of course, a lot of people did think the injury was a lie and just a story made up to excuse the bad performance. Justin Bieber was one of Frank's most ardent defenders. He posted a picture to Instagram captioning it, his artistry is simply unmatched, his style, his taste, his voice, his attention to detail. I was deeply moved. It made me want to keep going and get better as an artist. He continues to set the bar high and gave me a night I will never forget. Thanks, Frank. Last Wednesday, Frank pulled out of headlining Coachella's second weekend. It was initially announced that Blink-182 would headline that Sunday, April 23rd in his spot. According to Frank, he was advised by his doctor not to perform again after sustaining a sprain and two fractures to his left leg. Frank said in his statement, It was chaotic. There is some beauty in chaos. It isn't what I intended to show, but I did enjoy being out there and I'll see you soon. By last Thursday, it was announced Blink-182 wouldn't headline that Sunday and instead a special guest would. Now it seems like Blink-182 will play on the main stage Sunday night before Skrillex, Fred again, and Fortet headline and close out the festival. The trio have previously played together, having sold out their February Madison Square Garden show in less than two minutes. Though several witnesses and sources have given their reasons why Frank's performance went the way it did, we'll never truly know what was going on in Frank's head. Several have suggested that Frank is still recovering from the tragic death of his younger brother, who passed in 2020. Apparently, some of the songs, like the version of White Ferrari that Frank played, were in tribute to his brother. Frank did speak a few touching words in honor of his younger brother and said that he had fond memories of attending the very same festival with him. Still, a lot of people have claimed that as with other professions, people are often still expected to do their jobs regardless of circumstance. But I do think if Frank knew he wasn't ready, he should have had every right to pull out of the show because his mental health and his grief are more important. However, because Frank was rehearsing for the show for weeks and you know a lot of the changes with the stage setup were last minute, if his performance is related to grief, which we don't know for sure, it also could have been the case where he thought he was fine to perform and then realized he wasn't after he got on stage. And there's nothing that can be done at that point, but I don't want to speak too much on this because unless Frank confirms it, we'll never even know if this is true, so I don't really want to speculate on where he's at in his grief process. And Frank himself is citing an injury as his reason for pulling out for whatever that's worth. I think it might still be a little early to determine what exactly the fallout of this performance will be. Some people have talked about whether this will be career ending for Frank, but I don't know how true that is. I don't think I necessarily want this to end Frank's career, but I do think it should be a wake up call if he's still serious about performing. Because no matter what, artists are not performing at Coachella for free. They're getting paid to do this and are aware that people are spending their hard earned money to come see them perform. It's been pointed out that Frank has pulled out of festivals in the past. In 2015, he pulled out of headlining the FYF festival and was replaced by Kanye West. In a press release, Frank said he decided to cancel on his own terms. In 2017, he canceled his headlining appearance at Hangout Festival. This set was canceled due to production delays that rendered him unable to perform. Like I said earlier, some people specifically bought Coachella tickets for Frank's performance, so it kind of sucks that he didn't deliver on his set and then pulled out of the other. But on the other hand, I don't think anyone wants to sit through a performance where it's clear the artist doesn't want to be there. 
Some have stated that this was just how Frank performs, but I don't think that that should make it excusable. And he has, without a doubt, given better performances. There are talks about whether this will get Frank blacklisted from the industry or even the festival circuit, and I really can't say. I know it's happened historically to people, but I can't remember the last time in recent music history that someone of Frank's status had a performance so bad that it ruined their career. It definitely used to happen, but if you can think of any recent cases, do let me know. At the very least, I'm sure it's likely Frank won't be performing at any more events put on by Golden Voice anytime soon. I think a lot of fans confuse their admiration for a person with the quality of their work sometimes, or even the quality of a specific song or performance. You can like an artist and still admit when they mess up or don't deliver. It doesn't at all make you less of a fan. It's obvious people were upset because they were fans, which is why they were excited for Frank's performance. I doubt people paid for a Coachella ticket or spent time at his set just to go there and hate on it. Fans do have every right to express when they're upset with the show, and it's within your right to be critical of something you paid to see, and that's not at all the same thing as hating or being ungrateful. A lot of these fans were the very people that have supported Frank to enable him to even reach the status of headlining at Coachella. But honestly, at the end of the day, I do respect Frank for pulling out. If you know you can't give it your all for whatever reason, it's best to not waste people's time. It just sucks that this all had to come after one disappointing show, and then those who bought tickets for week two won't even get to see him either. But none of that can really be undone now, so I do think he's doing the best thing possible at this point by not adding insult to injury. Whether we feel like it's the right choice, at the end of the day, it's the choice he made, so clearly it's what Frank felt was right for him. So of course, do let me know your thoughts and feelings in regards to Frank Ocean pulling out of Coachella. I personally do think that this is a situation where you can acknowledge and have sympathy for both sides of the argument. Like on one hand, you can definitely acknowledge that Frank is grieving and that he might be injured and whatever else is going on that we may not know about. But at the same time, you can also acknowledge that fans spent money and traveled and were excited to see him and a lot of them felt let down. I'm not saying that you have to equate those two things in your mind, but I do think that it's fair to acknowledge that both sides are existing. It could be entirely possible that at this point in time, Frank is just over live performing, and I really don't think it was something that he loved or had a passion for before, because a lot of people can like music, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they like live performing, and I think if it took this show for him to realize that, it kind of just sucks that it was at fans' expense. And I do think that sometimes we kind of forget that just like any other profession or job, artists can lose passion for what they're doing, just like you and I can lose passion for things every day. And of course, if you were at Coachella and you saw the performance live and in the flesh, I would especially be interested to hear what you have to say. So if you were there, definitely leave your experience down below in the comments. As always, thank you all so very much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you can stick around for more. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter so that you can keep up with me there. And if you'd like to become a channel member, the link is in the video's description. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you so very soon. Bye-bye.